Why does God give us revelation? Because God wants us to understand the future. That's why the more you see what's going on today, did you know this current pope, um, is he from Argentina or Brazil? I don't know which. He's South American pope. He's a rarity. He is organizing more what we call ecumenical stuff than we've seen in ages. And more and more American Christians are saying that he's a good guy and that, that he is uh, you know, kind of like a Christian. And yet, what was the very first thing? You guys were alive when he became the Pope. I mean, it was just a few years ago. Do you know what the first words out of his mouth when they made him Pope was? His prayer, read it, it's on the internet. He said, Mary, I thank you. Mary? How could she hear him talking from Rome? He thinks Mary's omnipotent. He thinks Mary is omnipresent. He thinks Mary, in fact, last week, last week he was in Ireland, this current Pope. He hung a solid gold rosary on Mary's home, on this little altar in her home in Ireland. I didn't even know Mary lived in Ireland, but he knows she lived there, and, and he hung a rosary there and prayed to her from there. You say, what's that? God wants us to understand that Satan is going to counterfeit the truth. He's going to have Christians, by the way, Roman Catholics have about 98% Orthodox doctrine. Did you know that? They're Trinitarian, they believe in the inspiration of the Bible, uh, they believe in the deity of Christ, they believe in the crucifixion, they believe in the resurrection. Boy, they're just right down the line. But they've added the destructive heresy of works. You know what Paul said, if anybody teaches any other gospel, if they mix the gospel with works, if they mix the gospel with penance, with having to take part in the mass to be saved, to have a priest forgive you, if they do that, they're accursed. They're teaching a false gospel. So God wants us to know the future. And the seven types of churches portray the seven types of believer in stages of history. And I showed you this uh, uh, two days ago. Ephesus is like the early church, the apostolic church. Smyrna is like the suffering church that went through all those waves of suffering. Pergamus is when, after the church was legalized, it merged with all the paganism of Rome, and it became the, the polluted church. Then Thyatira is when the church ruled the world, basically. The Western world, the Roman Catholic Church ruled, and that's what it talks about when we get to Thyatira. And Sardis, by the time we come to the Reformation, the church is dead. But then the missionary era, you know, William Carey and, and C.T. Studd and Hudson Taylor, the 1800 onward, became the missionary era when there was evangelism. But you know, somewhere in there, and I put 1948 because that's the year that the, the National Council of Churches and the United Nations both started and Israel became a nation, three things at once, and the computer chip was invented. And that marked a change. And it's almost like the church has become Laodicean. And people are rich and increased with goods and they don't need God. It also portrays not only the history of the church, but the seven churches portray the seven types of believers that are in every church. There are distracted believers that have lost their first love. There are churches where they're suffering. There are compromised believers who have hidden sins. There are deceived believers who don't know their doctrine. There are stupefied believers who are just, you know, they're kind of not even thinking anymore. There are these impassioned believers that love the Lord. And then there are the uncommitted, lukewarm ones. And that's what's going on.